Hi there, Audi owners. Today in your 2012 Audi A5, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 1, one and a quarter inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. You will be able to see the cross tube going across the bottom here at the back, and the receiver does kind of stick out a little bit here at the back. It does not go past like the curves here of our vehicle at the back. So when you're standing up, it tucks up nicer than it is when we're down here, on our, you know, kneeling down looking at it. Uh, but it is going to be noticeable on your Audi, so just keep that in mind. It is a one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch receiver, so it's going to be great for light duty applications and accessories. Uh, this is a great, uh, great hitch for bike racks if you're looking to carry some bikes with you to head to the trail or something. Um, it's also great for cargo carriers if you want to get some weight um, at haul additional weight with you, bring some additional gear that you just can't fit in the back of your Audi, you can do that as well. Now, it does only have a max weight of 200 pounds on its tongue weight, so you're not going to be able to max out any cargo carriers. Um, but you can still definitely get a couple hundred, you know, 100, maybe 150 pounds of gear here on the back because uh, the tongue weight does include whatever the weight of the object you're putting in here. So your cargo carrier would uh, be added into that maximum weight. And you can also do a little bit of towing with it as well. Um, the towing on this is going to be restricted to light duty. So maybe if you've got like a, a very small utility trailer, you just want to use it to maybe move some things around, uh, help a buddy out, or maybe you've got a real small jet ski trailer or something, uh, you might be able to haul that with this as well. Just make sure you pay attention to the weights on your trailer. You'll secure your accessories to your hitch using a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but we've got plenty available here at e-trailer. On bottom, we've got plate style safety chain attachments with a kind of a smaller to moderate size opening, but we've got a slightly larger chain here uh, and you can see that even with the uh, slightly larger one here, we have no problem. And with it being a one and a quarter inch application, you're probably not going to have anything bigger than that. So it should work out just fine for you. This hitch features a 200 pound tongue weight, which is the force going down on top of the receiver. We already discussed some things that you'd be able to use that for, uh, like some cargo carriers or bike racks. It is going to be good for those. It also offers a 2,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much you can pull behind it. And again, if you've got a small trailer, um, like a little utility trailer, maybe a dog trailer, uh, if you're using that to bring your dogs around with you, it's really light duty stuff, you should be able to get a little bit of towing done as well. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it measures right at about four and a half inches. This is important when determining if your accessories will contact the bumper when inserted into the receiver and if they can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. And from the ground to the top inside edge of our receiver tube, we're measuring right at about nine and a half inches. And this is important when determining if you need a drop, rise, or raise shank on your accessories. And since this one does sit so low, I'd recommend a raised shank on your accessories. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle. Here on the driver's side, we're going to remove the plastic shield here underneath. So if we look here, we've got a couple of fasteners. We've got a couple right here. And there's also one here towards the outside. We're going to remove those with a T20 Torx bit. And just get those out of there. We're removing this plastic cover to allow us to remove the cross member of, uh, here at the back. The support brace here needs to come down so we can lower the exhaust out of the way to be able to install our hitch. Now, I, we're starting here removing this panel because we need to, but this cross cover, uh, this uh, cross beam here, the subframe at the back requires triple square sockets. So uh, you do want to make sure you've got a set of those in order to complete this installation. And we'll show you what those look like here in a minute once we get these covers out of the way. Now that you've got those Torx bits out, there's a push pin fastener located here that we'll also need to remove. And if we look at our push pin, there's a small slit in it there. That'll let you get your flat bladed screwdriver or trim panel tool underneath the center. And then you can just pry it down from there. These, these do get pretty brittle and stuff like that. You can see it's just kind of folding over on us. Uh, a lot of dirt gets built up on those, so it's not uncommon for it to uh, want to fold over like that. If that's the case, a lot of times you can just go up here with a pair of needle nose and grab it and pull it out with those. Now 
Now that we've got the center out, we can use our trim tool to pop the rest of the retainer out of there. And these two pieces, you can just push back together, just like that. So looks like we have a fourth fastener located here on the outside as well. It's also one of the Torx screws, so we're gonna remove that as well. And on the outside here, this is the other side of our plastic piece we've been removing. There's one more fastener over here. You can't really see it too easily from underneath because of the way it kind of wraps around. And this is the same size Torx bit that we've been using for the other fasteners. It does appear to be quite a bit longer in its length though, so just keep that in mind when you're going to reinstall your fasteners. This outside one here is the super long one. All right, so now we got all the fasteners removed. The panel will just slide straight towards the rear. Here at the front, there are kind of like little hooks. It's in the plastic here, so you may have to pull down on the plastic just a little bit. You could also use like a trim panel tool to do so, just to get it uh, slid out of here. And we'll just set this aside and we're going to remove the plastic panel in the same location over here on the other side. Next we're going to remove the support beams here, the kind of the rear subframe type support pieces that we've got here that run kind of diagonally from the rear towards the front. They are two separate pieces. If we look at them here, the one here on the passenger side is actually underneath this one here. So we're gonna remove this side uh, first because of that. So there's two bolts here towards the rear. Now these are the ones we talked about that are special. These are called triple square. It is a special size socket that you'll need to uh, make sure that you have. Um, it is possible to use other, other sockets in here to potentially remove them, but if you're not using the correct tool, you have the damage to strip out the bolt, uh, in which case it's very difficult to remove and you may have to pay a professional uh, to remove the bolts properly. So, um, and then get you new bolts in there. So I'd highly recommend just biting the bit and getting the proper socket, uh, so that way you don't damage anything in the process. This is a number, uh, this is a 12 millimeter triple square. We got the two here at the back. You can see how that one's separated down. This one's still gonna stay there. We're now gonna remove this one here. Uh, and this one here is gonna be difficult to remove. Um, the customer has bottomed out the vehicle. Uh, so the threads are damaged. I'm mean, not the threads, the head of the bolt has been damaged so the socket's not gonna fit. So we're gonna make our attempt here to try and fix it uh, and see if we can't get it removed. If we can't, we may have to use a bolt extractor um, and you may need to replace the bolt if it's that bad. Uh, so we're gonna skip this one for now. I'm gonna come back to it and see if I can't fix it. Uh, we're gonna head up to the front and there's a couple of bolts up there we'll take out real fast. All right, so we're over um, at the other side of our beam here. There's two bolts side by side here we're gonna remove with that same socket. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna thread this in just a, just a turn or two. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end of this bar so that way the bar is being supported while I try to fix that one bolt that's damaged. All right, so I was able to get it straightened out. All I did is I put an extension in the end of the socket here and I lined up part of it to where the uh, grooves here were lining up with the grooves of the bolt. It was probably at, it was at a bit of an angle like this because the other side was damaged. And then I just drove it in with a hammer and it was able to kind of create uh, the clean up that side that was all messed up there and got it in place. Now we can easily slide our socket in and out of there like normal once again and get that removed. So we do still have a bolt here on the front each side that I thread in there just a couple of turns. So I'll get those removed and then we can get this beam out of here. All right, I got those removed. There was one more bolt here that I didn't remove, and that was located right here. It's got kind of this uh, little flange that shoots off of this beam. So we're gonna get that removed as well. There we go, and then before I zip it out of there, I'm gonna make sure I got a good grip on it. There we go. 
And this is a pretty heavy beam, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. It's pretty heavy, so. Well now, set this aside, and then we're gonna remove the same, the remaining bolt that we've got on this side here, just going down the beam and get the other side removed the same way. So next thing we're gonna do is lower down our exhaust. Before we lower it down, though, we're gonna put a strap in place here. This will ensure that the exhaust doesn't drop down too far to cause any damage on anything. So you can just hook it on something here on your suspension. We're just hooking it on the sway bar. That should work out fine here. And then just tighten your strap up. That way it'll hold it. And then we can use our strap here to slowly lower it down. So now we got the strap in place. We need to remove the hangers holding the exhaust up. So we got a 13 millimeter here. We're gonna go up right here next to the exhaust tip. Uh, to, just to the outside, toward, I mean, sorry, towards the inside here. Straight up, you'll find your bolt. So we're just going right up. Zipping the nut off of the end there. And this is for the exhaust hanger. So this side's loose over here. We're gonna head over to the other side, go straight up and remove this one as well. All right, so now we got this side loose from its hanger over here. Now we're gonna head towards the front. So just follow your exhaust up towards the front. And right here, we have a cross member that we're gonna need to remove. And then this is our last hanger there. We're gonna switch over to a 16 millimeter to take the cross member out next. We get all these broke loose here. And then we'll zip this out of here. and just set that aside. We are gonna be reinstalling it. Now we'll switch back to our 13 millimeter for our exhaust hanger. And this one has two uh, bolts in it. So we got one on one side. And then after you remove that one, just on the other side of the hanger, you'll have another one. So it's nice and loose there. We do, on the other side of uh, a resonator here, we've got another hanger. This one also has uh, nuts and bolts on each side. So there'll be two for this one. All right, and now that we've got this side removed, our exhaust should be ready to come down. So we're gonna head back to that strap that we had put in place, supporting the exhaust, and I'm just loosening up the strap some. And we can see right away here, our exhaust is gonna to touch here and here. So we'll have to pull outward likely to allow this to clear. So we're doing that on each side, just kind of gently pulling outward. Lower our strap just a little bit more. And there we go, we got that down. We're resting on our strap here. And this should give us plenty of room to get up in there to work. We're now gonna remove the heat shield on each side. We're gonna use our 10 millimeter socket to remove the nuts. We've got four, two here towards the middle. And then on the opposite corners of the heat shield here towards the outside. Once you get those removed, this will just pull down from there. We're gonna remove the other one on this side the same way. It's got fasteners in the same location. We're gonna have to modify this, trim it, and then reinstall it. All right, so what we're gonna trim here is uh, from this hole to this hole, we need to trim out this whole area. So I'm just gonna take my snips in here. We're just kind of going over to where you can kind of see the marking here. I'm just kind of turning this into a rectangle cut. All right, just like that. And then we're gonna cut this out the same way with the other heat shield and then we'll reinstall this heat shield. We're just gonna pop it right back up there. 
and then reinstall the fasteners that we had removed. All right, then we can tighten those back down. And this is kind of the main goal here. This large hole here is our access hole for feeding our hardware in. And this hole here at the rear is also a hole that's going to attach our hitch. So we just need to have this area trimmed out so our hitch can go up against uh, the bottom of the frame there. Now we're gonna go ahead and fish wire our hardware into the frame. So go ahead and grab one of your fish wires. Now you do only get two of these, so you wanna be careful with them. Uh, because you're going to have to reuse it. You don't get enough for each bolts. So just be careful when uh, removing that. We're going to take the coiled end here. We're going to bring it up through the opening here in our hitch where we're going to bring our hardware through. We're going to go through the small opening first. And I usually like to put a little, just a tiny little bend in it, kind of like that. That just helps guide it the way I want it to go a little better. So we're going in the small hole, bringing it towards the rear of the vehicle. And then see if we can't get it to pop out of this big hole. Sometimes you have to guide it with your finger a little bit. That's why we put the little bend in it, just to help, uh, help guide it towards that hole. Once we get it to come out of the hole, we are going to grab our bolts. And you do have different size bolts that come in your kit. We're gonna see that here. So you'll, if you look at the carriage bolts, there are two different lengths. So we need to make sure we're grabbing the appropriate length for the hole that we're gonna be feeding in. So we're gonna use the longer bolt for these holes that are towards the front of the vehicle. We're gonna take one of the spacers, and you do have two different spacers too. This is the thicker spacer with the offset square hole, and then you got a thinner one here with a centered square hole. We're gonna be using the offset square holes. Slide that over the coiled end, take that longer carriage bolt and thread it into the coiled end. We can then push our spacer up into the frame and push our bolt up into the frame and then use our fish wire here to bring it back and pull it down through this hole. You'll then need to remove your fish wire so we can use it again. And this time we're gonna take the shorter bolt that comes in our kit and the same offset spacer we're going to push the coiled end through the spacer and thread the shorter carriage bolt onto the coiled wire. We'll then poke the bolt up into the frame, then poke our spacer up into the frame, and then we can use our fish wire there to bring our bolt back down through the center. We're now gonna repeat the same procedures that we just did on this side on the other side. You've got one more uh, fish wire here, coiled, coiled wire. So yeah, we're gonna do this exact same thing over here on this side to get our hardware in over here. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do now, um, I, went, I got both sides with the hardware fed in. I'm gonna unthread my coiled wire from the, uh, this rearmost bolt and I'm gonna thread it on to the forward most bolt because if this bolt pushes up into the frame it's going to be more difficult to retrieve uh, versus this bolt right here if this bolt pushes up into the frame there's enough room you can fit your whole finger up in there and fish it back out if you need to uh, this one's going to be in a much more difficult spot so uh, this will just protect us if we accidentally push it into the frame um, when we're installing our hardware we can just pull that fish wire to bring it back down i'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side making sure i got my coiled wire on that forward most bolt just just to kind of protect myself this is just a small insurance policy it's not required at all uh, but you might thank yourself if you get into a spot that you did this all right now that we got those thread on we're going to be lifting our hitch up i do recommend grabbing yourself an extra set of hands when doing so uh, mainly because feeding these fish wires through by yourself and trying to hold the hitch is just really difficult and we don't want to push the bolts back into the frame so the precision we'll get with an assistant is going to be worth it. All right, now we got ourselves our extra set of hands. We're going to raise our hitch above the exhaust. There we go. You have to pull the hangers kind of to the side just a little bit. Then we can feed our coiled wires through the appropriate hole that they line up with. 
And then we're just gonna gently raise the hitch up, trying to be careful not to push that hardware into the frame. Once you've got it raised up, we can take one of the flange nuts that comes in your kit and thread it on to your bolt. I would recommend starting with the one that doesn't have the fish wire so you don't accidentally push it up into the frame there. There we go. And once we get one bolt started on each side, that'll hold our hitch up there, making it easier to install the rest of our hardware. All right, guys, now, there's a couple of ways you could do this. this. There's a spacer, this one here that we haven't used yet, with this square hole in the center. This needs to go between the hitch and the frame. And you do have the option to tape this to the frame, but I find that it likes to move around a lot, and with the lack of fish wires you get in the kit, you just, you're increasing your chances of pushing your bolt inside the frame. Uh, if they give you more fish wires, it would have been a lot easier, but they don't. So uh, the easiest way I found to do this to ensure you don't accidentally push stuff into the frame, we had our coil wire we pushed on this bolt. It goes between these frontmost bolts and the hitch. So we're just pushing this bolt up into the frame. We got our coiled wire on it, so we're all good there. We're then gonna take the coiled wire and I'm pushing it uh, back through the hole so it comes out the side here. Just like this. So now that we've got it pulled out the side, we're just sliding our, that spacer on our coiled wire, and we're sliding this fish wire back in, pulling it back down through this hole. And now we can push our spacer in place. Oops. Try not to wrap your coil wire around it there. And then just pull our bolt back down through the hole like that. And now we got our spacer fed in there. Uh, so now we can just remove our coiled wire here and then put our nut on our carriage bolt. Just be real careful on this last step here not to push that bolt up into the frame when putting the nut on there. Here we go, and we'll do the same thing over on the other side as well. We can now go back and tighten down our hardware with a 19 millimeter socket. And then we're just gonna go back and torque our hardware to the specifications outlined in our instructions. All right, now that we've got our hitch fully torqued down, we just need to reinstall our exhaust and components in reverse order of how we removed them. So you'll wanna pull, pull that aside and then push up to get that clear. And then we're gonna to need to do the same thing on, this, on the other side over here as well. There we go. If you can get uh, a nut started, that would be great. You may or may not be able to, it just kind of depends. It's a very tight, uh, tight setup here. So I don't think we're gonna be able to. That's okay, we can just kind of uh, rest it there for a minute, tighten up our strap some, help support it, and then we'll head over to this side and uh, work on getting this side pushed up in there. All right. And then further tighten up your strap. Woo. And from there, you should be able to just kind of line all your stuff back up and get your nuts on. Don't forget to reinstall your cross member. And then once you got your exhaust fully supported, you can also take that strap that we had temporarily installed back down. Don't forget that on there. When installing your cross brace, uh, at the back, make sure you put the passenger side one on first. And then we can put our driver side one on next. Now it's because the overlap that you've got here. 
And that completes our installation of Kurt's Class 1 1 1⁄4 inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2012 Audi A5.